What's going on guys? This is the Wobble Fet, and welcome to Mechanics Monday, a series where I pick a mechanic to analyze each week that may be underexplored or unknown to players in the VGC community. This week, we're going to be tackling Skydrop, which has some of the weirdest mechanics out of all the moves I regularly see in VGC. It was the cause of two major glitches, one of which got the move entirely banned in VGC 2011 through 2013, and the other being patched out in Generation 7 after being discovered partway through DGC 17. However, glitches aren't the only thing that makes Skydrop weird. From completely ignoring redirection, to preventing Mega Evolution, to letting its target use Fake Out after the turn it was out, Skydrop brings forward complex mechanics that any studied DGC player should be aware of. Let's start with the basics. When a Pokémon uses Skydrop, it picks up the Pokémon into the air for a turn, where both Pokémon are in the semi-invulnerable state, like Fly or Shadow Force. On the second turn, the Pokémon is released from the sky, and that's when Skydrop deals damage. The Pokémon in Skydrop can only use attacks when it gets released, so trying to protect in the middle of Skydrop, for example, wouldn't work, because Protect tried to execute before Skydrop dropped you down. Skydrop has many applications in VGC, but a popular example from the VGC 17 season was Tapu Koko and Garchomp. In this battle from Utah Regionals, Conan here uses Skydrop with Tapu Koko onto TJ's Porygon 2, which threatened heavy damage with Ice Beam onto Conan's Garchomp. This bought a free turn for Garchomp to set up a Sword Stance, allowing it to threaten a potential knockout on the following turn with a Tectonic Rage. Another cool play involves using Skydrop and Trick Room to lock down the opponent in late game situations. I first remember reading about this in Hui Ha's 2014 Nationals Team Report, where he could use the combination of fast Skydrop with his Aerodactyl and Trick Room with his Audino to prevent the Pokémon from attacking for many turns. Here's how it works. The Skydrop user picks up the target Pokémon as the ally sets Trick Room, now, because the Skydrop Pokémon is the slowest thing on the field, the opposing Pokémon won't have a chance to use a move before Skydrop drops them down. Undo Trick Room, and repeat for as long as desired. Wait! We can do the- we can do the infinite no damage loop! You know what I'm talking about? Wait, which one? Like, I'll Trick Room and use Skydrop and they don't get to attack. Oh. <laughs> and then Timer win. <laughs> and then Timer win! Skydrop cannot pick up any Pokémon that weighs more than 200 kilograms. For those unfamiliar with the metric system, that's approximately 440.9 pounds. This is also the weight class that starts turning Low Kick and Grass Knight into 120 base power moves. So if you know that those attacks are 120 base power, like versus Tyranitar, you know that they can't be picked up with Skydrop. If you do make a mistake and Skydrop into a Pokemon's Protect that was too heavy to be Skydropped, you'll get a message saying that the target was too heavy instead of the usual Protect animation. To clarify, the Skydrop user's weight doesn't matter. The lightweight Rufflet can pick up this heavy Suicun, for example. Skydrop cannot ever pick up an ally, so attempting to cleverly stall by picking up your own Pokemon won't work. And additionally, Skydrop fails when used on a substitute. Skydrop can pick up a Pokémon that is flying type like normal, but it does not deal damage on the way down. One common misconception with this is that levitating Pokémon or Pokémon holding an air balloon similarly do not take damage. However, these Pokémon can be damaged just fine. It's only flying types that are unaffected by Skydrop's damage. Finally, a number of moves can hit either Pokémon during the semi-invulnerable state of Skydrop. These moves notably include Thunder, Hurricane, and Thousand Arrows, in addition to Gust, Twister, Sky Uppercut, and Smackdown. Despite what the move sounds like it might do, Smackdown does not cause Skydrop to end. In fact, it doesn't even remove the flying type or levitate from a Pokemon in the air from Skydrop. Gravity, however, does cause Skydrop to end, 
and Sky Drop straight up can't be selected while Gravity is active. If Gravity forces down both Pokémon during the middle of Sky Drop, the target will still be able to move during that turn. No Guard also allows you to hit Pokémon in the middle of Sky Drop, but we'll explore that a little more later. With the basics out of the way, let's start looking at the more complex mechanics of Sky Drop. Starting things off, Sky Drop's semi-invulnerable state takes both Pokémon off the ground. While this might seem obvious, it quite literally takes both Pokémon off the ground, which means that terrains don't affect each Pokémon until they return to the ground. You can use this mechanic, for example, to deny grassy terrain recovery, toxic Tapu Fini with a poison type, or use Bullet Punch on Tapu Lele with no guard Machamp. One of Skydrop's most practical applications is breaking redirection from Follow Me, Rage Powder, and Spotlight in a number of ways. For starters, Skydrop as a move ignores redirection altogether, letting you Skydrop the partner Pokémon beside the redirection. As you can see here, despite Clefairy's Follow Me, Tapu Koko Skydrop targeted the opponent's Eevee. In addition, Skydrop essentially negates redirection altogether if used on the Follow Me user. As you can see here, after Tapu Koko used Skydrop to bring Clefairy up into the air, Sacred Sword was not redirected into thin air, instead hitting the Eevee for a one-hit KO. This is an enormously useful tool to break apart dedicated setup teams that rely on redirection to buy their partners the turns they need to get going. However, it is important to note that abilities like Friend Guard, Unnerve, Lightning Rod, and Storm Drain still work in the air. As you can see here, Sky Dropping the opponent's Marowak does not stop Thunderbolt from being redirected by Lightning Rod. Notably, however, because Marowak is in the semi-invulnerable state, it does not get the special attack boost because Thunderbolt missed. While I was doing testing with Skydrop, I accidentally stumbled onto a mechanic I had never seen before regarding it in Fake Out. Normally, Fake Out can only be used on the first turn a Pokémon is out, right? Well, apparently Skydrop can cause the opponent to never take their first turn. Here's an example of what I mean. Suppose the opposing Tapu Koko here uses Skydrop on my Togedemaru as I try to get a Zing Zap onto the opponent's Celesteela. Now if I use a move with increased priority here, like Fake Out or Spiky Shield, Togedemaru will have not successfully displayed a message indicating that it did something. As a result, Togedemaru can use Fake Out on the following turn. While this is a unique situation, you can use it to your advantage if, say, you switch in your Mega Kangaskhan into a Sky Drop from Tapu Koko, if Fake Out is valuable on later turns. Of course, all of this applies to First Impression as well. After talking about this interaction with Marty, who is staff on Showdown in charge of battle mechanics research, he mentioned that a similar situation with Turn 1 Fake Out Conservation occurred when shifting a Pokémon in a triple battle. Anybody that can find another situation where Fake Out is conserved beyond turned 1 and puts it in the comments below will earn a follow from me on Twitter. So get researching and see if you can explore this interaction some more. Skydrop's accuracy is a bit peculiar. Skydrop is sure hit on the way up, which means that it's not affected by modifiers to accuracy or evasion. However, it can miss on the way down. What this means in practical terms is that if your Tapu Koko gets its accuracy lowered from Tapu Fini's Muddy Water, or the opposing Smeargle gets an evasion boost, you can be confident that your Skydrop will connect on the way up, but you could miss out on damage if you miss on the way down.
I've covered this in a previous Mechanics Monday, but notably, a Pokemon cannot Mega Evolve while in Sky Drop. Although you can press the Mega Evolve button, your Pokemon simply won't Mega Evolve. This does not apply to Z-Moves, which can be used like normal out of Sky Drop. Similarly, I mentioned in another video that using Sky Drop, or any move that puts you in a semi-invulnerable state, will let you ignore the initial countdown of Parish on. This can be used for or against Parish Trap teams to manipulate which Pokémon are affected by Parish on. To clarify, Skydrop does not pause the Parasong counter. If you or the Pokémon you're targeting is already affected by Parasong, the Parish counter will still tick down up in the air. If you were playing around the middle of VGC 17, you may remember that the spiky shield Skydrop glitch was patched which basically kept the Skydrop Pokémon stuck at 0 HP for the rest of the battle, giving a whole new meaning to the term, Dead Slot. Instead of actually fixing this, Pokémon instead made it so, despite being a contact move, Spiky Shield just doesn't deal any damage to the Skydrop user. This buff also makes it so Skydrop is unaffected by the effects of Baneful Bunker or King Shield as well. However, other contact-related mechanics still apply. You can still take damage from Rough Skin and Rocky Helmet, for example. Just to demonstrate this, notice how Skydrop doesn't deal any damage to Ferrothorn on the way up here, but on the way down, Tepococo takes Iron Barb's recoil like it should. Although it doesn't happen often, if Skydrop is interrupted while both Pokémon are in the semi-invulnerable state, target Pokémon is released, takes no damage, and is able to immediately act on that turn like normal. For example, if Mega Aerodactyl here is fully paralyzed when it tries to drop Mega Kangaskhan, Kangaskhan takes no damage and is able to use Return like normal. If the Skydrop user faints during the middle of Skydrop, either due to something like toxic damage at the end of the turn, or because of no guard shenanigans, the target of Skydrop falls and can act immediately. Interestingly enough, however, this does not apply the other way around. If the target of Skydrop faints due to residual damage or no guard shenanigans, then the Skydrop user must spend an extra turn dropping down to the ground. Of course, this doesn't deal any damage in the process. I really wanted to find some sort of glitch to make either Pokémon stuck in the air forever, though, so I tried a bunch of stuff with no guard to make it happen. I won't show off every interaction I went through here because it's tedious and pretty uninteresting, but here are my results. Whirlwind cannot make either side switch out, and same goes for Eject Button. Eject Button and Sky Drop trigger on the way down, but not on the way up. Disable forces an early drop in a similar manner to what happens if you get confused or paralyzed. Finally, Torment does not affect Skydrop going up and down, only in subsequent uses of Skydrop. 
There are some graphical glitches you can do if you turn battle animations off, but because these can't appear in a tournament battle, I'm not covering them in this video. Although it's not too relevant to the competitive scene, Skydrop can be used to reset moves that take multiple turns to complete, such as Outrage, Solar Beam, or Geomancy. Upon being lifted into the air, the Pokémon has the opportunity to choose a new attack. Unless you're trolling a free shock Kirin Black in Doubles OU that already used its Z-Crystal though, you can typically just protect, and you hardly ever want to stop the opponent from using a move like Outrage, which is terrible in Doubles play. Speaking of other cool mechanics that you'll never use, if your opponent used shenanigans to get Wonder Guard off of Shedinja onto another Pokemon that's not weak to find, like an Air Balloon Electros or something, you can Sky Drop the Wonder Guard Pokemon on the way up! You won't deal any damage on the way down, of course, because of Wonder Guard Electros's immunity to flying. Disappointingly, you won't even pop the balloon. That's all for today's Mechanics Monday. This one was a real doozy to test, and I'd like to give shoutouts to Intensity, Bright Size, and MC for testing with me and making sure I was thorough in my examination of Skydrop. What was your favorite interaction? Did you learn any new mechanics that you didn't know before? Let me know in the comments section below. I wouldn't doubt this move has even more bizarre properties just waiting to be uncovered. But until then, I hope you're able to apply what properties we do know into your VGC play. Until next time, have a good one.